I am thankful for Saquon Barkley. This is the worst. Motazi Tabanakis, welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucene. Coming to you on Thanksgiving week, officially, we are recapping and reacting to Week 12 Fantasy Football, uh, the studs and duds, a.k.a. on this show, the hearts and the farts. Uh, also, very important show for waivers, you guys. I will be going through waivers, not for this week, but for next week, for Week 14. Why? Because there are no teams on bye week this week. So you should have all of your players available to you. So, frankly, making ads for this week may not be very useful to you. But next week with six teams on bye, we can get ahead of our league mates if we make our ads this week for next week. But before we get into the waivers, we got to get through, like I mentioned, the hearts and farts. So let's. Start with some positivity. Let's start with the heart. For the quarterback position, Jaden Daniels did in fact finish as your number one fantasy quarterback on the week. Tua Tunga Viola was right behind him. Patrick Mahomes has finally started to have some good fantasy games again Caleb Williams Sam Darnold Bo Nix Cooper Rush CJ Stroud Matt Stafford Baker Mayfield rounding out your top 10 and then shout out to Jalen Hurts Jordan Love Bryce Young and Will Levis uh, who were all above 15 fantasy points for the running back Saquon Barkley broke fantasy football uh, this is one of my biggest shout outs my biggest Victory laps. I have Saquon Barkley everywhere. I have him in two of my most important leagues. Uh, in terms of my two highest paid leagues, my $250 leagues, I have Saquon in both. I have Saquon in the Megala Bowl. He has carried me to first place now in my division so far in the Megala Bowl, and I'll be advancing to the playoffs for the first time ever in my history of playing in the Megala Bowl, which, if you're not familiar, is the uh, tournament. For the fantasy footballers, one of the biggest fantasy football tournaments uh, on the planet. Uh, over tens of thousands of people are in this year. So uh, I'm I'm feeling uh, very <laughs> good about Saquon Barkley this year. Uh, also have tons of him in best ball. He went over 300 all-purpose, 255, uh, 255 rushing yards, 4 for 47 in the receiving game just for good measure. Two touchdowns. Uh, broke two 70-yard runs in the second half. It was the ninth most rushing yards all time in a game. And for the remainder of the season, they get Baltimore, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Washington, and Dallas. I am totally fine with that. Uh, he's even entered MVP conversations, has Saquon Barkley. Otherwise, though, Josh Jacobs also scored three touchdowns. Shout out Bucky Irving. Thanks, Jamal. None this guy. None this guy. None this guy. If you follow the show, I said trade for Bucky Irving and Rashad White. They have a monster schedule coming up, and they took advantage of this matchup. Uh, I was one of the few people that had Bucky Irving in some of my best ball lineups. Unfortunately, the rest of those lineups didn't hit. Uh, but he was a huge uh, differentiator for me this week. Uh, if anything, I should have taken even more of him. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, Tony Pollard, Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb showed up in the end zone on Thursday. Uh, Devon Shane double touchdown. Jalen Warren back on Thursday. Chuba Hubbard. Smash his way into the end zone in a tough matchup against the Chiefs. Amir Abdullah ended up with a receiving touchdown. David Montgomery, uh, before getting knocked out, did find the end zone. Uh, Kenneth Walker had a decent game. Rashad White also found the end zone, and so did Kyron Williams. For the wide receivers, Jordan Addison with a monster game. 
Uh, we'll talk about the counterpart there later. Uh, Cortland Sutton uh, continues to dominate. Jalen Waddle from out of nowhere. Uh, I literally said he was a drop candidate last week, and I believed it. And then, of course, you know, just to prove me wrong, went for uh, over 100 yards on a tutty. Uh, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin one was scary, too. He was doing, frankly, nothing until the end of the game when he caught that crazy 80-yard touchdown uh, in that game against the Cowboys. And then the Cowboys had two special team touchdowns, so that was just a loony game. Uh, A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, Nico Collins, Jacoby Myers uh, with the volume, but now without a quarterback. JSN continuing the breakout. I have to give credit to JSN and my guy who. Puka Nakua, David Moore. Who? David Moore is a journeyman, used to be on the Bucks. Now he's with the Panthers. Uh, Calvin Austin back on Thursday, caught the long tutty. You had Cooper Cup, Cavante Turpin in return yard leagues. Calvin Ridley. And then kind of just like uh, volume guys, Michael Pittman, 6 for 96. Uh, you had C.D. Lamb, 10 for 67. You had Jerry Judy, 6 for 85. You had DeAndre Hopkins with the touchdown. And then speaking of touchdown, NWH, Nick Westbrook Akine. Uh, I faded him this week, and he went for two for 48 in the touchdown. So he had that one long 35-yard touchdown. It paid off. At the tight end position, we've got a double shout-out this week. Thanks, Jamal. None this guy. None this guy. None this guy. Did you follow the Noah Gray spot start? I was here on Thursday, and I said, with all the bye weeks, with everything going on, I'm, I would chase this production against a bad Carolina Panthers team, hoping that the Chiefs get up and that he catches a touchdown. He didn't just get one. He caught two. Went back-to-back -back again, did Noah Gray with two touchdowns. And uh, so that made him literally the number one tight end on the week. You had Trey McBride uh, without the touchdown, but went 12 for 133. Janu Smith, 9 for 87 and a tutty. Chigo Conquo, one whole catch, but it was for 70 amazing yards. It was actually a sick play, uh, breaking tackles along the way, going for a 70-yard touchdown. Uh, George Kittle found the end zone. Hawkinson got it done with volume, 7 for 114. Austin Hooper vultured Hunter Henry's touchdown and some work from him. Uh, you had Schoonmaker and Ertz finding the end zone. You had Cole Komet refinding relevance, 7 for 64. And Tucker Craft found the end zone, 2 for 26, and a tutty. On defense, the Dallas Cowboys, aforementioned. The defense actually was not great. Uh, obviously, they gave up that ridiculous play to Terry McLaurin, which almost lost them the game, if not for Austin Siebert missing a ridiculous extra point. And the reaction was incredible. Uh, Seattle Seahawks, Houston Texans, Green Bay Packers, Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Arizona Cardinals, the Philadelphia Eagles, and even the Tennessee Titans all had above 15 fantasy points. So it was a good week for your fantasy defenses. But you know who it was not a good week for is all of your farts. Man, don't bullshit me. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. 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 You sound so bullshit. For the quarterback position, you had Anthony Richardson, Jameis Winston back on Thursday, Russell Wilson in the same game, Drake May, Gardner Minshew, who sadly broke his collarbone and will miss the remainder of the season, and Geno Smith were all under 15 fantasy points. But they didn't kill you because they weren't under 10. The guys who were were Danny, uh, wait, Danny DeVito? No, Tommy DeVito. Hey, I'm on the fought list over here. Uh, Jared Goff on the road. Just, they didn't need him. It was rushing touchdowns. And Kyler Murray. I have mentioned this before, and I will say it again. I think the problem with Kyler Murray is an attitude one. I, I think... Certain players, you know, the quarterback, you need, if you had Saquon's personality and Kyler Murray's body, you wouldn't have a problem. You know, they make the jokes about how he prefers and maybe prioritizes Call of Duty releases over, you know, practicing for the game. And I do think, you know, kind of it's telling when you have that quote. It sticks with me, that quote of, 
him saying, well, it's not really my job to get the ball to Marvin Harrison, and I just go with the offense. And kind of that football answer, but it was very much of like an I don't give a shit type of answer. That's the way it comes across, and that's the way he can come across at times as a player, just in terms of his attitude. Um, so I think you'll continue to get the very boomer bust type of games with him. At the running back position, Kareem Hunt actually did not have that bad of a game, 16 for 68 and 3 for 19, but you were against the Panthers. That was supposed to be a smash matchup. You didn't score. You're on the fart list. Uh, DeAndre Swift, James Conner, Joe Mixon finally had a bad game. Najee Harris back on Thursday. Tyrone Tracy fumbled again. Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson both got injured again. CMC has not looked like himself since returning from the injury, and it doesn't help when you have Brandon Allen as your quarterback. Ramondre Stevenson had a bad game. Jonathan Taylor uh, had you know a bad game. It's a combination of, yes, Anthony Richardson doesn't dump the ball off, so he's not getting any receiving work. Uh, he's getting vultured. Uh, opportunities in the red zone. Yes, that is true. But more than anything, it's just that it was a bad match against the Detroit Lions, and they got their butts kicked. Uh, Trey Benson had him as a uh, deep spot start, didn't do anything. Jordan Mason, same thing, thought they would just lean on the run in the absence of their quarterback, and that did not uh, pan out either. And Jonathan Brooks, in his uh, debut, had all of two carries. And, uh, oh, Raheem Mostert also has just been relegated to irrelevance. For the wide receivers, Amon Ross ain't brown. I just hold you to a higher standard, my friend. Uh, six for 62, that's rough. Jamison Williams, five for 64. Uh, Mike Evans, five for 68. Tank Dell, three for 72. Malik Neighbors, six for 64. That one, again, is like, what are you, you going to do when Tommy DeVito is your quarterback? But you're not happy, really, with 6 for 64. Uh, DK Metcalf let me down in a big spot in some best ball lineups, 4 for 59. Tyreek continues to struggle, 5 for 48. Wandale Robinson, I only put him on this list, not because he's a fart, but just to compare to Tyreek Hill because he had 5 for 47. So you basically got Wandale Robinson production out of Tyreek Hill. That's how, and it's been like that all season, frankly. Um, so that's just more damning evidence of Tyreek Hill being a possible contender for bust of the year. Uh, you had George Pickens back on Thursday. Uh, also, uh, Cedric Tillman on Thursday Night Football. Uh, Elijah Moore on Thursday Night Football. Otherwise, Jawan Jennings, uh, that one, I kind of saw that one coming as soon as they announced Brandon Allen. I kind of got off the Jawan Jennings train. Uh, Romeo Dobbs had a concussion. Roma Dunes, keep an eye on that one. He still had 10 targets. Marvin Harrison Jr., 3 for 47. The struggles continue. So he's going to be also considered as a potential bust of the year. Uh, but again, it goes back to the whole thing thing of like mentality of wanting to build the relationship and rapport with your number one wide receiver i mentioned peyton specifically because of the attachment obviously to marvin harrison senior but it's like that didn't just come out of nowhere like that didn't just come through game reps i don't think people i mean people do realize but it's almost like it's forgotten now because it's like just it's a different generation playing now of you know, those thousand practice reps for Peyton and Marvin Harrison Sr. panned out through the years. And if I don't know if we're going to get that from this quarterback to wide receiver connection, quite frankly. Uh, Jaden Reed was disappointing, three for 26. Debo Samuel, again, you know, Brandon Allen issues. Justin Jefferson caught his second pass in overtime. If not for that, he would have finished with one reception. This was an entirely Jordan Addison game. This was weird. And Justin Jefferson has not been his elite self the last couple of weeks. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, but otherwise, kind of deeper starts like Lockett and Pearsall didn't work out. Christian Watson goosed. For the tight end position, Travis Kelsey. Six for 62 is not bad for tight end. But when we have to watch Noah Gray go as the number one fantasy tight end on the year, 
and you're supposed to be Travis Kelsey, a.k.a. The, one of the greatest fantasy tight ends of all time, that is probably the biggest letdown of the week. Go fuck yourself. Hunter Henry, just five for 44 in a plus matchup. Brock Bowers, uh, only four for 38. Ten targets, but now he's going to get a quarterback downgrade. So we could be seeing problems there. Dallas Goddard, four for 19. Cade Otten, just one for 30. This one is the one that I guess doesn't concern me as much because he's still obviously to me the second target behind Mike Evans. They just did not need the pat. They didn't. Baker Mayfield didn't need to throw a passing touchdown in this game, and they dominated the Giants. So I think it's really they leaned on their running back trifecta. Uh, Sam Laporta, three for 19. From wor- from first to worst, baby. Uh, Laporta was the number one fantasy tight end last year. I don't even know that he's in the top 15 right now. Uh, and Joku back on Thursday, just one for nine. Uh Dalton Schultz, if you're still playing him, had two for 20. Same with Colby Parkinson. If you're still holding on to that dream, just one for 10. On defense, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Washington Commanders, which I had as a a start myself, uh, I thought they would destroy the Cowboys, and it did not, didn't turn out that way. Uh, The Lions, the Broncos, and the Steelers, if you played any of those defenses, it just did not work out for you. Okay, so let us get into probably the most crucial and important part of the show, the waiver wire. The fuck, the fuck, the fuck is in the air. The fuck, there's white shit everywhere. The fuck, I must be fucking baked and this shit's probably fake. The fucking hell did I just take the fuck? So once again, there are no bye weeks in week 13. That means that you should be able to set your lineup with all of your best players. This should also give you right away a purview of what players are on your bench that you can drop because you're just not going to use them for the next two weeks unless they are a playoff stash and you are also a very high-seeded team. You may even have to sacrifice certain players where, oh, this guy might be a playoff stash for week 16, 17, but if you don't make it to week 16, 17, that guy is useless to you. So sacrifices are going to need to be made. It's better to get ahead of it right now because, again, no bye weeks this week, and people aren't really going to be thinking ahead that way for the most part. So what you're going to want to do is – You're going to look at, obviously, who's on bye week for week 14. The Ravens, the Broncos, the Texans, the Colts, the Pats, and the Commanders. If you're finding yourself overweight on those players, uh, unless you're undefeated and you're just going to take the L that week because you have all your bye weeks that week, I'm looking at drops and redraft. Justice Hill, Bateman, uh, Rashad Bateman, Isaiah Likely. For the Broncos, anyone but Nixon Sutton. Maybe you could make an argument for Javonta, but honestly, I I mean, running back is bad, so hold on to him unless you absolutely have to. Uh, Texans, anyone but Stroud, Mixon, or Nico. You can make the argument for Dell, but he hasn't really done much this year. Uh, For the Colts, anyone but Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson, or Josh Downs. you can make the case for Michael Pittman, but again, it's very been very hit or miss. For, for the Patriots, anyone but Ramondre and Drake May only in Superflex. And uh, for the Commanders, anyone but Jaden Daniels, Terry McLaurin, Brian Robinson, and maybe Ertz and Eckler. You can make arguments for those guys, but like I wouldn't be holding on to Noah Brown through this week when he's not going to make your lineup and a bye week, for example. You can you can make the case for Eckler. Like, you don't need to hold Eckler if he's not going to make your lineup this week and also have a bye week. If you need that that spot to cover, again, a spot for week 14. So looking ahead to week 14 now, and again, you're looking at, I need a quarterback fill-in for Lamar, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, uh, CJ Stroud. You know, I need a running back fill-in for somewhere. I, 
Again, these are fill-ins for week 14 that you're going to collect ahead of time. So Bryce Young will be facing the Philadelphia Eagles. I really like Cooper Rush a lot. He will be facing uh, the Cincinnati Bengals at home. That could definitely turn into a little bit of a shootout. And even if you're desperate, uh, whether it's uh, Tommy DeVito, hey, I'm on waivers over here, or Drew Locke that you want to stash, they're going to get a home matchup against the Saints. I like the Saints' defense by the same virtue, but I also could see them taking advantage of that matchup a little bit, so I don't hate having uh, DeVito or Drew Locke in a super flex if you know you're going to have quarterbacks on a bye week. For running back, this is where it is very thin, and there's really not a lot of options out there, but Devin Singletary, again, spot start potential against New Orleans, just looking for a warm body. He found the end zone this week. He is still getting some of the run behind Tyrone Tracy, and if for some reason the fumble's makes it so that it flips and Singletary is started again, you might get ahead of that a week early. Sean Tucker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have a matchup against the Vegas Raiders, who now lose Minshew for the season. They are a ship without a mast. I could see them not wanting to risk Rashad White, maybe limit Bucky Irving, maybe limit the touches of those two guys. And so maybe we see more Sean Tucker in that game, and we see him vulture some uh, some touchdown work. For wide receivers, again, I'm seeing Noah Brown, Devon Bailey kind of getting added. Those guys have week 14 buys. They might not be useful. Let other people make that mistake. The guys we need to target, as much as I have resisted chasing the Nick Westbrook Akine points, NWH for the Titans, He does get the Jacksonville Jaguars in a home matchup. Any Bears wide receiver, I think, is worth a spot start. Keenan Allen, Roma Dunes, uh, both had 10 or plus targets. Uh, And it is a tough matchup against San Francisco, but I don't hate that. I think you can stash Josh Palmer if he's out there. You can even pick him up tonight. Uh, Quentin Johnson, if he's still floating on waivers for some reason, should definitely be owned. It's a tough matchup against Kansas City, but it's a divisional matchup, so maybe they take advantage of that. And Kansas City has definitely been giving up more through the air lately as opposed, like, they're still tough on the run, but they have definitely kind of loosened up a bit in the air. Uh, Demarcus Robinson for the Rams. That's a deep cut. He's floating on waivers in a couple of my leagues. It's a tough matchup against Buffalo. So you'd think Cooper Rush and Puka Nakua might be busy, and maybe we see a Demarcus Robinson touchdown. And then what I really like is Jalen Tolbert. Again, going back to that Cowboys-Cincinnati matchup, I think that could turn into a sneaky shootout. For tight end, we're going back to Noah Gray. (laughs) It sounds silly, but I'm just taking the spot start. They're using him, and as long as they're still using him, He's worth a spot start against the Chargers. Again, going back to the Cowboys Cincinnati. Well, I like the Schoonmaker, Luke Schoonmaker against Cincinnati. If Jake Ferguson gets dropped out there for some reason, make sure you stash him too, just in case he's back instead. Uh, On the flip side, I like Mike Gesicki uh, against Dallas, especially if for some reason T. Higgins misses that game. If T. Higgins is in, you can kind of take your shot on Gesicki or Hudson or whoever and hope for the best. Uh, but another sneaky one, the Muth, Pat Pryor Muth. I've been so out on it all year because of Arthur Smith, and it just doesn't fit uh, uh, a true number one receiving tight end in this offense because he likes to use all of them. But his be- one of his best games fantasy-wise has been against Cleveland, and it's a home matchup against Cleveland. So the Muth is worth a spot start if you need a warm body at tight end. And on defense, New Orleans Saints will get the New York Giants, the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's a scary one, but they get the Tennessee Titans. Will Levis always willing to turn the ball over, and it's a home matchup for the Jaguars. And the Dolphins. This is probably my favorite one, the Miami Dolphins defense. Been a little bit hit or miss, but they get the Jets, the woeful, woe-begotten Jets, who may not even uh, have Aaron Rodgers anymore. Who knows what's going on with this team? It's all bad vibes with the Jets right now. 
I think that could be a sneaky good play. And again, just a reminder, these are all week 14 ads. So again, week 13, no bye weeks. All of our studs are playing. We are making our ads for week 14 to get ahead of that bipocalypse and let other people have to pick over the leftovers. All right, that's it for me today. We're gonna keep it short and sweet on this show. We'll be back on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my guy Dustin Ludke going through all of the Thanksgiving and the Sunday matchups so that we can get you ready for your week 13 slate of fantasy football. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe. But until the next time, I will catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes